what's going on guys and welcome to today's video and welcome to a extremely cold Kansas day out here but um, yeah I've got another WJ in my life now now cheap Jeep has officially been sold and is gone and I have been without a WJ for almost a full month now but that all changed because my new Jeep that I'm hopefully getting is going to take a lot longer than I am planning now so <laughs> I was in the hunt for another WJ and I've actually been hunting this exact Jeep for about two months now and finally, finally got met up with the guy and of course brought it home. So I thought instead of just the normal, hey, I bought another broken Jeep, I thought I would kind of go through my process or what I bring with me when I go look at these broken, tired, neglected things and uh, how I you know, bring them home. And then, yes, of course, we'll of course look this thing over and see what we've got. Now, this being my 12th WJ that I have bought or rescued or saved or whatever you want to call it, I feel like I'm getting pretty decent on knowing or at least knowing what to uh, look at or bring with me. Now, of course, if the vehicle's not running, if the engine's hurt, if, if something like that, then of course I'm bringing the truck, the trailer, and hopefully limping it on the trailer or it getting drug on the trailer but in this case this was a supposed running and driving jeep that had just been sitting or sidelined i don't really know and i kind of still don't know why it was parked um, so let's get this thing pulled in the garage uh, out of the cold or at least out of the cold a little bit more and then i will kind of show you guys what i bring so guys, let's take a quick look at this thing before we get it pulled into the garage and then I will kind of show you guys what I bring with me um, to better look at these things in there, wherever the heck they are. All right guys, we've got a 99 Laredo 4.7 liter. This thing is kind of oddly almost an exact copycat of what my personal cheap Jeep was. A Again, 4.7 Laredo, but somebody kind of started clicking options on the interior. We've got leather, um, we've got the Infinity Gold Sound, leather steering wheel, just kind of a few more things than a normal base Laredo would have had. Now, this thing does have the factory protection and tow hook group, which is kind of cool, and I don't often get Jeeps with these. So this has the front skid plate, the transfer case skid plate, the fuel tank skid plate, and the front tow hooks. Um, and this does not have the factory trailer tow option, but that means it gets the pretty darn rare rear tow hook. But all in all, the body is just in really darn good shape. No real signs of any rust. Yes, the plastic is all faded because 20 year old WJ, but it's really not in bad shape. So that's why I chased this thing for as long as I did and finally got a hold of it. Now I have already done a little bit of cleaning on this thing. It had a old pinstripe down the side. It had the plastic vent visors going around the windows. Of course, I've got all of those yanked out of this thing already, but really for me, not even running a vacuum through it yet. Um, yes, that driver's seat bottom is torn and I will need to attempt to find a nice replacement, but man, it's really, really not in bad shape. Um, yeah, it again needs massively cleaned up, but it's really in decent shape. Now the mileage, this does show 203,000 miles. That is more than I have ever bought one um, with, but again, it looked clean and I kind of had to take a chance on a higher mileage WJ here. Um, jumping underneath even, it's really, really in good shape. Um, frame rail is really, really nice. No rust through anywhere under this thing. Still has the factory cat, which is again, pretty rare. There we can see our transfer case skid plate looking good. Our fuel tank skid plate is trying to get a little bit crusty there in the center. But again, this is the outrageously thick factory skid plate. So I'll be able to clean off some of that corrosion there, shoot a little bit of rust protectant on it. And that thing should be good for the rest of this thing's life. So guys, let's jump into the garage and I will kind of go through my process on what I look for on these things when I am looking at these tired, dilapidated Jeeps out in the world. All right guys, so back in the garage here out of the cold wind, I thought I would go through what I normally bring with me 
um, at least in this case where I am planning on driving the vehicle home, if that makes sense. If I know the engine's hurt, of course we've got the truck and trailer, like I said. But this is what I brought with me when Dad and I went out to check this thing out. Um, first off, a creeper, and you might be going, why are you taking a creeper with you? Typically, WJs are left abandoned in not great conditions. This thing was sitting behind an apartment for Lord knows how long, out in some gravelly parking lot area, um, and it was a cold, wet day. So instead of laying on the ground, crawling around under a vehicle, or trying to just get down on your knee and look under the vehicle, not getting a very good look, I'd rather have a creeper, a tarp, a blanket, something to throw down on the ground to be able to very thoroughly get under that vehicle and take a look. You're going to be able to see all of our normal rust places. And again, this goes for any vehicle you're looking at, not just a dumb old Grand Cherokee, but you really want to get under the vehicle so you don't have surprises the first time you actually get under it to work on it. Now with that creeper, I also like to bring a decent flashlight with me. Um, Again, it's not going to be a very well lit area crawling around under a dirty low vehicle. So having a decent flashlight that you can take under the vehicle, under the hood, looking in the interior, under seats, all of that kind of stuff is going to be very important when you are with the guy standing next to you that is trying to sell his vehicle on Facebook Marketplace and you're there to beat him up on price. So a good flashlight, a good creeper. Um, what else do I bring in my bag here? I, I really don't bring too awful much. Um, some rubber gloves so I can check oil. Um, again, at least in our 3.7, 4.7 uh, engines in Chrysler's, they're known to burn oil. So I like to, before I drive the thing home after purchase, make sure it has oil. And if it doesn't have oil, go ahead and bring a quart or two of oil with me. Again, this vehicle had been sitting for however long, I checked the oil and it was about one quart low. So I was very happy I was able to dump a quart of engine oil into the engine before I drove it home, purposely driving it a quart low. Um, another couple of things, I do bring a couple of screwdrivers with me, not to, rep not to repair or work on anything, but I typically bring a license plate with me off of one of the other vehicles um, so I can have a current tag on the back of the thing. Yes, I'm using a tag off of something else to drive the vehicle home, but I would rather have a tag off something else to drive the thing home down the road instead of just purposely being pulled over with no tag. So a couple of screwdrivers, if you've got to remove their old tag, put your tag on, whatever. Now another tool that I do like to bring with me is a small pair of vice grips. And you might be wondering, what, why are you bringing vice grips with you? But like every single WJ I've ever bought, or almost any used tired vehicle at this point, anything with hood struts and not a hood prop rod, those struts are absolutely going to be blown. So if you've got a pair of vice grips, you can very easily lift the hood Open your hood up and instead of having to look under the hood while trying to hold it and it not working out very well for, well for you, you can take your vice grips, clamp your old tired hood struts and then boom, your hood is up so you can more efficiently look under that hood. Correspondingly, you can use it on the back of the vehicle on the lift gate. If those props are blown out and gone like they of course are going to be, those will again work in the back so you can check for spare tire, tools, condition, rust, whatever you're looking for, those vice grips are going to come in extremely handy when you are out looking um, for your next hoopty on the side of the road. Now, last but not least, um, the last tool that I bring with me is a tire inflator of some sort. Now, no, you do not need the Milwaukee M18, um, you know, high capacity inflator, absolutely not. Just a little 12 volt plug into cigarette lighter one would work extremely well. Before this one, I had the M12 Milwaukee version, which again works amazing. It's just a little bit slower than this big beast. But again, I'm glad I brought it with me when dad and I were out looking at this thing because again, it had been sitting and 
all four tires were down into the teens on tire pressure. So that would have been a pretty poor drive home if you were, again, driving on flat tires. So this always comes with me and then our other tools. Now, another thing that I normally will bring with me is a jump box. It's currently sitting at work, but again, I normally will bring a jump box with me to jump start the battery. Most people have a dead battery from their vehicle sitting for X amount of time, or in this case, it didn't even have a battery in it, which is a story <laughs> for another time. But yes, a jump box, if possible, I have a top down um, jump box that has worked very, very well. But again, any jump box is going to work well if you need some battery power to get the thing started and listen to the engine. So guys, now that we've got our you know, initial inspection done, we've looked under the vehicle for rust, we've been underneath of it with our creeper or tarp or whatever we've brought with us. Um, we've checked our fluid levels before we start our potential purchase for the first time um, and potentially added accordingly. Um, we are ready to then jump start the vehicle or hopefully maybe it has a battery and the battery is good and we can fire that vehicle up and listen to it. Now I won't start this just because all we're gonna hear is the engine noise, but hopefully you're able to start that vehicle up cold for a cold engine start. Um, a lot of times a warm engine will mask some engine noises, whether we've got piston slap or lifter clatter or something. So ideally you'll be able to fire that thing up cold with your hood up with your vice grips and listen to that engine. And again, we're listening for abnormal knocks, abnormal bangs, clunks, whatever horrible things the thing might be doing. Now, yes, you could be buying a vehicle with a hurt engine that of course you're going to be hearing those noises. But again, it's always good to be able to fire the engine up cold if possible and listen for noises. Now, after I've got that engine fired up, I will go out and again, pending the vehicle is mobile take the thing out on a drive. I'm listening for, again, engine noises, but now we're also listening and feeling for transmission um, shift quality or, you know, does it have all the gears? Hopefully you're able to get the thing out on the road and shift through all the transmission gears. We wanna make sure we've got neutral, reverse, and all of our forward gears, obviously. And again, we're then listening for any drivetrain noises. Um, or any drive line noises, you know, axle bearings, wheel bearings, all of that kind of stuff that is probably gonna be worn out <laughs> like this one is on this 200,000 mile WJ. But again, you do expect to find or hear noises on that vehicle that you're buying used off Facebook Marketplace, but all of this kind of comes together with your final um, offer to that person. Um, specifically this Jeep, he and I had agreed on a price, obviously less than his asking price because I'm a shrewd negotiator, um, but we had agreed to a price, finally agreed to meet, and then I went out and finally drove the thing and it had a lot of noises. We had wheel bearing noises, we had rear end noises, we had drive shaft noises, none of the power windows worked, none of the power door locks worked, it just had this massive list of things that I found in my two seconds of looking at the vehicle and since I was prepared and brought tools and things with me to look at and investigate all of these issues, I was able to go, hey man, I know we agreed on this price, but I absolutely cannot pay that. This thing needs so much more work. The windows don't work, the locks don't work, the wheel bearings are falling off the vehicle. What can we do? We of course met at a lower price than we had initially talked about, and I was able to drive the thing home. Now guys, a few other things we want to be looking at, and again, this is not just WJ specific, but any vehicle for that matter. Um, at least here on the WJs, we've got this crash bar that is right here behind the front bumper. Now that is a really good place to kind of take a look and see um, how crashed or not that vehicle has been in the past. I've seen a few WJs come into the shop that that front crash bar is shaped like a banana and shoved back into the radiator. Obviously, the vehicle got a front bumper cover put on, but not um, properly repaired any more than that. So um, just different things like that that you can look at in the front of that vehicle to hopefully kind of better help your case on if you want to purchase that thing or not. 
Now, like we talked about, you're definitely wanting to crawl under that thing and look for rust, look for damage, anything like that. And then moving into the interior, if your vehicle has power seats, make sure things work forward and back and up and down. Because even if the vehicle's rust free and not been crashed, some of those things can add up extremely quickly or be extremely hard to find. In the case of WJs, those power seat frames or motors have all been long discontinued at this point, and your only option is salvage yard hunting for parts and pieces. So again, do a little research before you committed to go out and look at your next horrible purchase because you need to make sure you can get parts for the thing to be able to get it on the road and moving again. Another expensive thing that always ends up coming up is a windshield. A lot of times we'll have big cracks, big chips, big damage on windshield. That is an immediate couple hundred dollar replacement there on your windshield. So again, make sure you're looking at your glass in your walk around on your used vehicles. Now guys, one of the big last things that you want to make sure you look at extremely closely is the title. I have gotten burnt on a couple of Jeeps that I've had to end up chasing down previous owners to get titles signed correctly or amended because they were signed incorrectly. So when you get that title, before you give them a dollar, you definitely want to come over onto your dashboard and verify the VIN number matches what is on the title. Most vehicles are gonna have a VIN number in multiple locations. Um, oftentimes, there will always be one on the dash, but you can often find one on the driver's door jam. And again, there will be a few in other places. In the WJ's case, I believe there's one in the trunk underneath the carpet. So again, as long as you're verifying you've got a VIN number here and on the door that match the title, that's at least your good first step. Now the next thing you really, really need to watch out for is how that person has signed the title. Um, on the front of that title where they have their name printed, for myself, if I'm the owner and it's Tyler Potter, when I go to sign the title on the backside, I need to make sure I sign that title as it is on the front as Tyler Potter. Again, I have gotten a few titles from vehicles that I purchased and they've had a middle name missing or a middle name changed or different than what was on the front of the title. And at least here in Kansas, our tag office is extremely strict on signatures and printed names. I've had to chase down, again, like I said, owners that were previous to the person I bought it from because they never turned the title in and it's been an absolute mess. So again, be cautious about buying a vehicle with a jumped title, <laughs> one that has not been turned in. As long as the name is signed, you should be maybe probably okay. But like myself, I've ran into the issue where I've had to chase down two owners ago on a vehicle because the person that I'm buying it from never turned the title in. So again, look over that title about three different times and then hand it to your buddy so he can look it over because you want to make sure you do not run into title issues. Um, the last thing about titles is if there are multiple names on a title. If it is Tyler and Kelsey Potter, um, you could also have a title that says Tyler or Kelsey. You, again, very much need to make sure that title, if it is an and title with two names, both people have to sign and print on the back of that title. Otherwise it is not able to be turned in and you are not able to get a tag and own that vehicle. If it is a or title with a two names with or in the middle, then again, you are able to just have a single signature signed on there. So there's a lot of things to look at, a lot of things to watch for so you don't get burned on your own hoopty out there, but hopefully some of these little tips or tricks or whatever we're talking about here today will help you out on your future purchases. Um, so yeah, so again, some of the tools, some of the parts, some of the pieces you'll be a little more prepared for to air your tires up to put oil in your engine that you're buying and driving home for the first time. Now, of course, it goes without saying to check all of our other things on the interior. You know, we want to make sure headlights work and radio works and windows work and door locks work. Again, 
We're buying broken tired vehicles online, but anything that you can kind of find initially will help you make a better judgment on whether you want to buy this darn thing and bring it home. Now I did buy this one relatively cheap because it was of course missing a battery when I showed up. I had to go, <laughs> dad and I had to go run to AutoZone buy a battery just to put in this thing and at least fire it up. Now I have never ran into that before without somebody explicitly saying, hey, I don't have a battery for it. You're gonna need to bring your own battery. I could have been a lot more prepared, but they said absolutely nothing until I went to turn the key and the vehicle didn't start. So brought went and bought a battery luckily was able to throw the battery in with my few little tools that i had and we were able to fire it up and we didn't have any weird engine noises thank goodness um, like i said this was a quart low on oil so i was thankful that i brought some oil with me to dump in it before my drive home tires were all flat so we used our tire inflator my flashlight we used with my creeper to look under the vehicle and again i threw a tag on it so i could drive home with a little less um, police intervention. So I used absolutely everything that I brought with me for dad and I to go look at this thing and even more since I didn't bring a brand new battery with me of course. So again guys hopefully this will help you out on some of your future Facebook marketplace dealings and you'll be able to be a little more prepared when you're out there looking at garbage out on the road or behind an apartment or behind a house or in a side yard like I normally am and hopefully you can bring one home and start your own rebuild and save all the WJs. So guys, what is my plan with this thing? Like I said at the beginning of the video, I have ordered a new Jeep, but it is going to take a very, very long time to show up. So I got a little bit tired of dialing the gas guzzler TRX over there. And I was again, like I said, I was hunting this thing for about two months and finally got with the guy and got it brought home. So. This is now gonna be my daily driver for the time being while I'm working on it. And like all the other Jeeps, it will eventually find its way back onto Facebook Marketplace for a new owner to hopefully have a very nicely sorted out Jeep. Again, this thing has 203,000 miles, but as long as we get it sorted out and gone through, we will be able to make this thing, I think, a pretty darn decent Jeep. Um, I've already got a massive order of parts on uh, online ordered for this thing so I'm slowly getting those parts in and I'll slowly get this thing going and sorted out yes I've already got a lift ordered and yes I've already got my Jeep Wrangler wheels sourced for it so it will be lifted up like all of them have been and it'll look a little bit cooler with some wheels and tires so guys, thanks for coming out into the garage with me today and welcoming my 12th WJ and my now new daily driver because I sold my previous daily driver and don't have a current daily driver, so that was not very smart. But here it is in all of its glory and it's the right color um, and it's a little bit rough around the edges right now, but that's what we're here for to save all the WJs and this one will hopefully be looking a lot cooler in this coming week. So guys, as I always say, thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you guys next time.